The GP explains that test results have given a diagnosis of a life-limiting illness. There is unfortunately no curative treatment. He suggests referral to the Douglas Macmillan Hospice, explaining the many services the hospice provides. So once we receive a referral, we aim to contact the patient within 48 hours, unless it's marked as urgent and then we will contact them within 24 hours. Um, we find out how they're feeling and if they were aware of the referral and, and then we make an arrangement to go out to visit them. And we also um, give them a contact number because we do have an advice line at the Douglas Macmillan Hospice which is 24 hours, 7 days a week, every day of the year. My role is to provide a holistic assessment um, of the patients and the family and provide support for them and aim to provide the best quality of care for as long as possible. When we first meet with a patient, um, obviously we, need, we want to put them at ease, so we just find out what their knowledge is of the hospice um, and discuss that with them. And we talk about some of the facilities that are available at the hospice um, and basically they can um, access as much or as little as they feel comfortable doing. The hospice provides care to uh, around 3,000 people per year in their homes, in the hospice itself, um, in our community lodges on site, in the day therapy unit, so in a number of different places. Uh, and to provide the care we need around £11 million a year. Um, and three quarters of that actually is provided by uh, the generosity of local people, by fundraising in our shops and the lottery. Um, so only a quarter of it comes from the NHS. Hi, I'm Claire Swain. I'm the ward manager of the Douglas Macmillan Hospice. Um, I, I work on the inpatient unit. Uh, we're a 28 bedded unit. We look after patients with life limiting illnesses. And it's not just cancer that we look after. We look after patients with any life limiting illnesses. More than 50% of the patients that we do have uh, return home and that's on a regular basis. We have um, several patients that have been coming for the last two years now for regular treatment. Without the volunteers, um, the inpatient unit um, would really, really struggle. They are vital to the unit. Um, there are several different roles, including clinical volunteering. So they work along the health cares. Uh, they're an extra pair of hands. Uh, they also sit with patients who are distressed or struggling. Uh, that, that frees up the family um, to go to work as they would do anyway. Uh, our primary aim um, within the day therapy and snack patients is to keep people as independent as possible, uh, to keep them as home as long as possible, as well as possible, and to give them back themselves, make them feel that they're the person they were before they were ill. We take anybody with any life limiting illness, wherever they are within that illness, any needs that they require from us, we're there to help them through. In the outpatients we do complementary therapies, lymphedema therapy, uh, physiotherapy which is quite exciting for us because we're forming our own gym for our patients specifically for their needs. The Community Lodges is a nurse-led unit which opened in May 2011. We've got three individualised units and we offer end-of-life care and respite for patients within this area. The care is delivered by a team of skilled healthcare support workers and clinical volunteers. I manage the unit and monitor the patients while they're here and I'm supported by our community consultant and also the medical team at weekends. The community lodges were built to enable patients to be as independent and offer facilities for families to stay over. They can be as involved in the care as much or as little as they want to. We have a team of nurses and healthcare support workers here 24 hours a day. I'm the social work team manager. Uh, we have a team of uh, four social workers and a social work assistant. Um, at the most basic level we try and improve the quality of people's lives. A uh, common experience of people with a life limiting illness is uh, often a sense of losing a lot of control over a lot of aspects of their lives and their sort of mandate in my team is helping people to gain as much of that control back as they can. 
A lot of the support we provide to people is uh, helping them to cope with the emotional uh, uh, demands that a life limiting illness causes, both for the patients and for the families and the carers. And a large part of that work is helping uh, parents and significant caregivers to support the children to talk about uh, death and dying and supporting uh, the children through that process of grief and loss. Initial thoughts on arriving and walking through the front door was just what a, an amazing warm place it was. It was it was nothing what I expected of a building that was caring for people with life limiting illnesses. The hospice uh, for me is um, a fabulous place to work. Um, the atmosphere within the hospice is very upbeat. It's a very happy place. I came on Wednesday day therapy and it was hilarious. I've never laughed so much in my life. I could talk about my health and they understood what I was saying. I didn't have to apologise or explain or I could just be me. And other people, they, they were there and they were doing the same things. For that, those few hours in the day, the staff and the patients, we were just on the same level. We were talking, laughing, and you came away from the Douglas Millen with a sense of well-being. And I think what we do within our unit is try to create a safe environment where people uh, can feel that they know us, that they can befriend us, that they can trust us. And we were looking to get her into a private hospital and she came here and once we came through the door that was it. We were just like, made so welcome as I've already said but it was just having that, that sort of arm around you all the time and that, that hand to shake and the information, the understanding, nobody kept anything from you and, and that's what you, well that's what we needed as a family. The best part of my job is knowing that the patients are looked after and comfortable and when I go home at the end of the day I know that I've done the best that I can for them patients. Uh, I came down on Monday and from Monday till now, I've felt 100% better. Uh, they're very kind, they've got plenty of time for you, they're not rushing you in and out. If it takes half an hour, it takes half an hour. You can actually see and feel the goodness that's inside. I'm with my mum, who was an inpatient at the Douglas Macmillan Hospice. She came in on Monday and we're here for pain management, to get symptoms under control and just to review what's going on with her, basically. It was a massive relief once we got her here. Um, I knew, I personally knew that once we got her into here, she'd relax and everything would just settle down. We're very proud of our facilities to be able to allow families to stay. And, and make this their home while the patients are here. Staff were really professional, they were helpful and nothing was too much trouble. And there was always somebody there for, to talk to, not only for, for my wife and myself, but my family, my boys could come and they could talk to people and they could actually understand what was going on. Right, Rebecca has vanishing white matter disease, which is a very rare genetic disorder and it's progressive and eventually it is actually fatal. We were told she wouldn't live beyond a teenage years initially, um, but with obviously support given by the GP etc and being at home I think as well, she's managed to hang on and she's still with us and this is what happened last August, she was admitted to hospital. Uh, in a lot of pain. It was obviously the condition as it had kicked in, as we call it. I asked for the palliative care team to come out to her and they came, sorted out pain relief, but then did the referral to Douglas Macmillan. Michelle was given to us as our named nurse. She's become a friend over the months, um, got to know me, knows how I work, and uh, you know, she's got to know Rebecca because it's consistency is a big key. They don't go over your head, they don't do anything behind your back, they discuss everything. Also listen to what Rebecca's needs are and what she, her wishes would be, as well as the families. 
and there's no hard and fast rules of you will do this and this is the way we do it. The staff here have got time for her needs so um, because of what condition she's got they actually look at each condition and see what's the best way to handle her, what's the best way to, to treat her really, not just medically but um, personally as well. You know, it's been the best thing that happened to us really. <laughs> Um, but honestly, if, you, if they say to you, would you like to go into the Douglas Macmillan for any treatment or respite, you should just accept it and it, you won't be disappointed. It's brilliant.